Hello everyone, my name is Mad Radio DX UK and I want to welcome you to this video where I'm giving five reasons why DMR has been needed for a long time in the ham radio community. Now what it is is that I've had comments um, on my videos from people saying, oh, you know, um, doing DMR is doing contacts uh, through the internet. And I suppose it's like them saying, you know, they don't consider DMR um, as, uh, you know, real ham radio. Well, in my opinion, it is real ham radio. Okay, and I'm going to give five reasons why, you know, not only is it real ham radio, but also why, you know, especially it's, you know, it's been needed a lot in the ham radio community for a very long time. So the first one is that um, you can still do ham radio through a hotspot when you cannot have your own HF setup. Now, let's say for some reason that, uh, uh, you know, in your home, like if you live in a flat or an apartment and your landlord puts restrictions on you on antenna setups, you know, outdoors, you cannot have your own external antenna for, you know, uh, doing the HF bands. And that is a letdown because that means that you won't be able to do ham radio anyway. It's very difficult to do ham radio with your antenna um, indoors. But thanks to DMR and, you know, the improved, improvement in technologies, you know, in the technology itself over the years, you can have your own hotspot in the home and you can talk to fellow ham radio operators around the world thanks to having that um, hotspot. And yeah, it is a savior, especially for those that, you know, you live in a flat or apartment, you're a ham radio operator, you want to do um, ham radio but you just cannot do it through the HF bands. Well, DMR is your answer and DMR is great uh, because, you know, me doing it, I really enjoy it. And if, uh, for example, you cannot do HF, um, you know, uh, ham radio where you're living at the moment, consider doing DMR and getting your own hotspot. The second reason, you know, DMR has been needed for a long time in the ham radio community is that you can still do ham radio through a hotspot when you don't have access to a DMR. Uh, repeater now what it is is that you know for example not only dmr but on the fm you know when uh, you're on the two meter band for example talking in narrow fm uh, mode um, you sometimes have the help of a, an fm repeater um, to talk to people further away than you can reach with uh, your own uh, setup and uh, dmr is the same as well you know um, for example, here in the UK, they're normally on the 70 centimeter bands, the DMR repeaters. I suppose they're the same throughout the world. I'm not, I'm not too sure about that, but certainly here in the UK, it's through the 70 centimeter band. And the great thing about DMR is, again, you set up your own hotspot. And like I said, if you don't have a repeater in your own city or town or it's too far away from where you are, you can still do DMR through that hotspot and st uh, still talk to fellow ham radio operators worldwide okay the thing is though is uh, uh, i've got a uh, dmr repeater here that's fairly close by i've done a couple of tests and even when uh, using my bauerfeng uh, transceiver indoors i can access that uh, tr uh, repeater really well uh, you know transmitting to it uh, to it and getting a signal back uh, signal back from the uh, repeater but the thing is there's not a lot of activity on that repeater and it's very you know gets very frustrating thankfully being able to set up a hotspot has uh, solved that problem of you know doing you know being able to make contacts but also listening to busy dmr networks like for example um, talking on talk group 91 on the brian meister network so you know again you don't need, uh, you know, the help of a, you know, an outside repeater on transmitter. You can use your own hotspot, you know, to do DMR, uh, you know, contacts and QSOs. The third reason why I think DMR has been needed for a long time in the ham radio community is that you can still do ham radio when HF conditions are bad. Now, lately, my area conditions have been really bad. Um, I attribute it to the solar conditions that we've had at the moment affecting radio signals, but also just conditions are bad anyway. Um, things like high K indexes and so on. And this has been very frustrating, not only to try and do SSB voice contacts, but also to do digital modes. Now, digital modes, um, you know, uh, I've done I've done it through uh, bad conditions and sometimes I've been able to make contacts. But lately, it's been very frustrating doing something like one contact an hour or maybe two or three contacts, uh, you know, ev uh, every four hours or something like that. And that is just very frustrating. On a good day or on a decent day, I can do a lot more, a lot more contacts than that. So, 
therefore when conditions are just really bad um, or we're having another solar flare or anything like that we can do dmr and we can still talk to fellow ham radio operators and we can still make uh, contacts and qso's with ham ra uh, radio operators around the world thanks to having a hotspot in our home or maybe if uh, you know um, your local dmr repeater is connected to an internet uh, gateway the fourth reason why DMR is really needed in the ham radio community for a long time is that you can still do ham radio by taking a lot less equipment or using a lot less equipment than when, a uh, than, uh, when on the HF bands. So, for example, in the home here, you know, I need my transceiver, you know, I need my power supply, I need my antenna, I need my laptop as well for when I want to do, um, you know, uh, HF band ham, ham stuff, you know, like, for example, digital modes. Um, uh, you know or if I want to make SSB voice contacts so a lot of equipment uh, you know and also a lot of cables uh, lying about and uh, it can look a bit messy uh, sometimes as well but also if you want to do you know portable ham radio stuff activities you know you have to take your trans again you have to take your transceiver you might have to take an external battery you have to you certainly have to take an antenna as well again that's a lot of stuff to take but with DMR all you need is a small transceiver you all you need as well is you know a, a small hotspot if you don't have, have access to a dmr repeater for example and that's it really you know and then the antenna is connected to your small transceiver you know like i've got my rubber duck antenna on my power thing and yeah and that's it and it it takes up a lot less space you know certainly will keep for example the wife or the girlfriend happy you know by having a lot less clutter um or mess in the uh, in the house and the uh, fifth reason why DMR is really needed in the ham radio community is that you can have greater success and guaranteed QSOs on, or contacts than compared to example on the uh, HF bands. Because I mean, one reason that I found all too commonly why it gets so frustrating doing QSOs or trying to do a QSO on the HF bands is that you get a lot of hams fighting you know, to do a QSO with that one single operator. Now, an example I can give you is that in the, uh, you know, early in the morning here, I like to listen to uh, North American hams or people in the, uh, for example, in the Caribbean area, Caribbean islands. Um, they, uh, you know, they, they usually do contacts uh, to ham radio operators here in Europe. And I like listening because I like to listen, you know, to hear which one of the operators is, you know, you know, is speaking mostly to, you know, to ham radio operators here in Europe. Um, and at that time, it's the best time to receive those, you know, the ham radio operators on the other side of the Atlantic. But the, the common problem that I find, you know, with uh, trying to make a contact with uh, these people on the other side of the world is that you get lots of people, a lot of ham radio operators trying to make, con you know, trying to get a contact with those operators, you know, in the USA, Canada, you know, uh, you know, the Caribbean islands, etc. And the thing is, is that it, you know, if, if I was trying, I know I'd get very frustrated because, you know, maybe after two to three hours of trying, I won't be able, you know, I won't be able to make a contact at all because I'd probably be using a lower power setup, you know, um, five watts of power and a you know a simple you know vertical antenna you know and I'd be going up against you know people using um, mega antennas you know like tower antennas using uh, 100 watts of power and so on so you know for me the chance of making a contact is very very low I have managed to make contact uh, you know a contact or contact with people on the other side of the Atlantic um, but that has been very rare and few you know few indeed um, but the other thing as well I want to point out about, you know, um, trying to make contacts on the HF bands is that some ham radio operators, they lack manners and etiquette, you know, when, um, you know, uh, when operating on the HF bands. One example was I was making a contact with uh, somebody and uh, then somebody else, you know, uh, was trying to um, butt in and uh, make contact with that ham radio operator that I'm speaking to. And I'm like, hey, excuse me, you know, I'm the one trying to, you know, I'm the one making the contact right now with this ham radio operator. You wait your turn until I'm finished, okay? And this is a problem I've, I've, I've you know, I've encountered a few times already um, when, uh, you know, op you know, when, when operating on the uh, HF bands. But the thing is, 
uh, with uh, DMR, I've hardly encountered this problem, at least not yet anyway. And usually I find it very well mannered in that people take their turns, you know, when uh, wanting to speak to a certain operator, ham radio operator. So that's the great thing about DMR. You know, they, they certainly ser uh, show a lot more manners than those, you know, that operate on the uh, HF bands. And of course, with that, you have greater success, you know, with uh, making a QSO or contact with, uh, you know, with the person that you intend to speak to. So those are, uh, those are my five reasons why, you know, uh, DMR has been needed in the ham radio community and is really needed in the ham radio community for a very long time. If you don't like DMR, well, there's other things you can do on the, you know, reference uh, doing ham radio, for example. And the thing is as well, it's the same for me when uh, people say they don't consider digital modes like FT8, they don't consider it like real ham radio. Well, I don't understand that because for me, it is still radio and you still have to, you know, the, the, you know, the, the way that you have to make contacts with other people, for example, when doing FT8 is the same when you're making a contact uh, via, you know, when, when you're doing an SSB, uh, when using SSB voice modes, for example. So those are my uh, five reasons why DMR, you know, is really needed at this moment in time and for a long time. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in another video.